Well, Simon Wilson, top of the league. We're in the, the final eight of the FA Trophy. It feels like an absolutely wonderful, incredible time to be a Stockport County fan. But what is it like for you guys here on the inside? And when you look back at your career, wherever you've been previously, are any parallels? Have you ever known anything like this? Yeah, well, it certainly doesn't feel like the times when I've been in teams that got relegated because <laughs> uh, I've had both sides of it. But um, no, you are right. I've had um, lucky enough to be around teams that have been in similar positions to this where chasing, um, you know, trophies on, on a couple of fronts. Yeah. Um, I suppose the thing that I really notice about this time and, and where we are as a club is just the whole community, if you like, coming together. It feels like there's a real um, momentum around the whole the whole place, you know, whether that's um, at Carrington where we are every day or over at the stadium when we have days here at the academy, you know, but even just walking about and, and talking to, to supporters, you know, every time you sort yeah. of bump into them. So it, that's great. That's exactly where you want to be. Um, fo football wise, um, you know, we always have said we want to be playing in matches that matter. Um, you know, we want to be playing in, in games with, with high consequences on them against the best teams in, in, in full stadiums. And, you know, I suppose we're going into that, that moment now where, you know, it's, it's a great, great time for, for all the staff and the players to, to accept that challenge. Well, let's talk about the man who's really at the, the forefront of all of this at the moment, Dave Challoner. Um, for those who don't know him, I mean, he is he's a really likeable bloke. He's a very affable, friendly guy uh, away from football and, and around the club as well. Um, but it's clear from his, his post-match interviews that he's setting very, very high standards. He's, he's coming across quite demanding. I think, you know, you look, we're top of the league, 17 unbeaten, and yet he's talking about, you know, what things we can do to make us a better team. Those yeah. kind of qualities um, are quite unique. What do you think sets him apart from other managers? Yeah, no, I, I think... Um... I think he shares a lot of traits with with successful uh, managers and people that I've worked with in the fact that he is very clear about um, what he wants. Um, he set that out from day one mm. in terms of style of play, um, in terms of um, work ethic, uh, and he's never complicated it further than that. You know, he keeps going back to to those aspects. And of course, you never nail it. You never become perfect at that. So there is always another level. And you know, I suppose what what we're trying to create here is that um, that environment where people are sort of comfortably uncomfortable in the fact that they can constantly be challenged, that they want to better themselves. And um, you know, we are, you know, we, we don't like it. I was going to say whether we like it or not, we don't like it. But we are in the fifth tier of football, so we are by no means perfect, right? So. Um, so we, we, you know, we, we, we've got um, a competition to, to, to win, to be able to get out of that, and that's, that's the challenge this year. But football-wise, we we'll never nail the game. No one ever has. And you know, there's always a, an opportunity to get better. Um, and, and, and we want to challenge the players with that. So, um, yeah, I think you're right to, to pick that up. He's, he's demanding. I don't think unfairly. I think he, you know, we provide support to, for the players to reach those levels. Um, and, and we aren't expecting perfection every week. That's not practical. But we do think that there are aspects of our game that yeah, aren't yet at, at their potential. And, and that's exciting, I think, for the players and for the supporters to, um, to, to hear and, and, and see if we can get closer to that because we're not doing too bad at the moment. Of course, all good leaders need a good team around them and, and clearly the support staff that he's brought in. I'm thinking Dave Conlon was already here and has provided that continuity. Clint Hill, of course, yeah, is a, a yeah, fairly yeah. recent uh, arrival at the club. Yeah. That support team is, is crucial, isn't it? it no, no one person can do it on their own. I mean, I like, we like to build people up as heroes and geniuses and stuff like that. The reality is, is that it's always a team of mm -hmm. people, that nothing will happen unless everybody is, is playing their part. And we certainly do have that um, sort of culture and environment at, at, at Carrington at the moment. Um, I think um, I think you also need a leader to be the type of person that um, that that creates that environment as well. And and again, from day one, 
whether it's job titles, whether it's where people sit, whether it's, you know, Dave has been very keen to not create any type of hierarchy. Um, we have a, you know, we have a big office at Carrington, everyone's in there, everyone inputs, everyone shares in every type of decision, whether that's the planning of the next month or the, the, the game plan for the next game. Um, you know, everyone's around the table and inputting into those decisions. And I think that makes us stronger and it makes, gives Dave more opportunities to make better decisions as, as a manager and a leader. And I, and, and I believe that's what he thinks too. I suppose it, if you were looking at it in horse racing terms, looking at the season, we're kind of entering the, the final turn maybe as we come into the home stretch. We're probably at that point at the moment in the yep. season. Have you set any, either privately or, or shared with the team, have you set any kind of points targets? Because a lot of fans I'm speaking to, admittedly mostly in the Prince Albert, but a lot of fans that I've spoken to are saying eight or nine wins out of these 13 games, that'll be enough. Have, have you set that kind of target? Look, what we, what we do to be... It's really hard at the start of the season to sort of understand what you know what, what it takes to win. So we've 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 from day one set set things like that out in terms of just looking at history, looking at where points are picked up, you know where, what what champions need to do very well to go and be successful. And so yeah, we've got all those things mapped out. Um, you know the great news is, is as it stands, we're absolutely bang on track, like literally across all of the metrics. So. We, we are doing the things that need to be done to, to win the league at this moment in time. Right. Um, so if you project that out uh, over the, uh, the course of the rest of the season, um, you know, that gets to you know, an abstract number. Now we're in that moment where you know, different things will happen. Right. Teams will lose games that, uh, that you wouldn't think that they would lose. You know, we might suffer challenges like that. You'll have injuries, suspensions, referee decisions. And as we said before, all of these will have a high consequence. So it, as you get closer to the final games, it's a little bit, um, like I say, abstract, some of those numbers. Yeah. But what we've had to do is put ourselves in a position where we are now, right in the mix, and, uh, and you know, you're fighting for that uh, to close off this season and, uh, as champions. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. It's great to be having that conversation. And I know we talked a lot about um, the monumental changes off the pitch, the new manager coming in. One thing that's not changed too much has been the squad. Um, but there's been a couple of additions since we last spoke. Obviously, Ryan Johnson's come in, pretty much all at the back. Ryan Johnson's come in. Um, obviously, Miles Hippolyte has come in. Uh, we've got Luca, the goalkeeper's coming on loan as well. But that's it. There's not been huge change in personnel. In terms of those additions, though, particularly the, the, the first two I mentioned, Ryan, I mean, I get the impression he's probably been a, a more strategic, long-term target. And I guess Miles... I don't know, has he just come along the right guy at the right time? Because you've, you've had this sudden short-term glut of suspensions and injuries. Sure. No, I think we won't... We won't look, I think that there's a, there's a few principles sort of going back in, in, into your question there in terms of additions this season. I think, you know, and Anthony Sarsovic didn't join us on day one. He came into the team probably game 10, game 11, something like that. And I think, you know state of the obvious his his impact's been enormous really since he's come to the club and I'd really like to credit you know Jonathan Smith and the scouting yeah. team who you know in fairness I didn't know too much about Anthony Sarsovic when I came to the club but from day one he's been the name that has I've been told that if there's an opportunity to ever get get Anthony we've got to make it happen so you know you know that's without that sort of advice we, we wouldn't be able to go and make these moves as quickly as, as, as we've been able to do but you know he's been a big player for us this year and and obviously we, you know, Scott Quigley wasn't particularly available in that first period nor was Mark Kitchen in, in, in that first period so yeah. so we've had players that were you know within the group that have, that have come back into into fitness and have, been, have played their part but as you say um, we uh, we probably um, realised quite early that uh, we needed more balance, you know, in, in the left side of defence. Um, you know, Zeki Fry has played for a period of time uh, at the club and, 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 and helped, you know, in the period that he was here. Um, Ryan was somebody that, that had become available uh, in the period, had worked with the manager before. We knew his level. The deal was a very sensible deal and it, and it sort of made sense, sense to do it. So, and even with Miles, I mean, Miles. We had the situation with, with ultimately the catalyst for that was John Rooney in the sense that yeah, John yeah. John and uh, John's playing time was becoming less and less, but due to the success of the midfield yeah. three that are playing more regularly, um, John John is an you know credit to John. There are players that say they want to play more and they're not happy to 
to, you know, to, to stay here. There are players that um, want to say they want to play more and, 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 and want to take opportunities when opportunities arise. An opportunity arise for him to go back to Barrow. Yeah, it was a sensible financial deal for everybody in place. And uh, Miles was a player that was on our scouting list that, again, at that moment in time, had become available that we thought was a good addition between now and the end of the season to, to get to know each other better and, and see how that goes. Um, I think he's so far so good with Miles. He's played a few different positions. He's played regularly, so he's helped the team. And as you said, we've gone through this moment in time where you will get injuries, suspensions, that type of thing. You need a squad. You need players to step up when they come in. And I think Miles and others who, who have done that have, have done well in, in that aspect. I had a chat with Miles when he first came in. He was sort of talking about he's a great lad. Now, when I was talking to him and sort of looking into his background, he, he's kind of he's been very honest. Cause he was kind of saying that in his early part of his career he was a bit lackadaisical and kind of enjoyed being a footballer but maybe he wasn't putting in the 100% effort and when you look at that as a background you think Dave Challoner you know he's demanding intensity 100% all the time but yeah. Miles has clearly developed and grown up and and has just fitted him perfectly hasn't he? Yeah I th I'm a big believer as you meet people as they are and I, I haven't known that with Miles I mean yeah. he's 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 um, somebody who's been you know on day one where can I go swimming on my days off so I can recover better, you know, and, and I know that that's the sorts of things that he is doing. Um, somebody that wants to ask questions about, you know, how he's playing and how he can fit into the team and I see him doing that with the coach and stuff. So, so yeah, you know, and, and when we did our reference checks, we spoke to, 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 to managers that had, had uh, Miles before who, you know, were, were very positive on him. So, um, so yeah, maybe Miles is being a bit um, humble in that aspect, or yeah. but certainly that's not the Miles that we that we've known. And um, look, Miles has had had a good start to the club. I think all of us would, including him, would suggest that there's more to come. I mentioned earlier there that that little glut of suspensions and injuries, and uh, particularly at the back with Liam. Kitch with, uh, with with Ryan Rydell as well. Are you at this point? Are you tempted to try and? strengthen the squad in any way or is there almost a are you thinking to yourself well actually there's a good argument for continuity here and keeping the group tight and keep it as it is what what's your thoughts on that yeah look in general in general i'm a believer of building teams um and i think that again you know that's not just me using uh, the short experiences i've had around around the game that's that's looking at the research that we've done that in general the, the more successful teams do not have a lot of change, and uh, which allows for obviously lots of lots of team aspects to be built. Um, you know, we're in a league where um, there isn't really a transfer window, so um, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, it keeps that speculation alive for much longer than it does in other leagues, right? Um, and it's tempting to always think of uh, you know that again. Going back to the point, we're in the fifth division. There's, in theory, four divisions worth of players that are, are better than the ones that, 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 that we have. I'm not sure that's 100% true, but it, it can be tempting to think there are opportunities to, to you know, in theory, upgrade. We, um, we're very, very comfortable with the team we've got. We think the team that we've got is good enough to go and win this league. We think, it's, it's, we think that we can see some longevity in this team as well. So we don't anticipate in changing for change's sake. That said, of course, if there are opportunities like we've done before to upgrade with, um, with, with high quality additions, um, Ollie Crankshaw is another one that we, that we talked about that again fell into that category, um, then we will take those decisions. Of course we will. Looking ahead to, to this weekend, obviously there's a, an FA Trophy quarter-final looming and um, need a market away. Is it, it, it's a tricky game, but we know promotion's everything. But how significant is the trophy? Because I must admit, as we're getting closer and closer to what would be a Wembley final, potentially, mm. I think I'm getting more excited about the competition as well. Yeah, and good, I think and you should. Yeah. It's a natural thing to, yeah, to feel like that. And, and I know the fans are starting to talk about that as well. But do, uh, do you welcome it or is it yeah, a distraction? Yeah, absolutely. No, 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 no. Like I said, we want to play in matches that matter. Matches yeah. that matter. The biggest competitions that we can play in and go and win stuff. And we're also trying to create a winning culture at the club. You know, we of late we've we've done that and I'd like to think over the over the time um of Mark's ownership we have become a winning a winning club and you know it's it's certainly everything around first team level a little bit different with player development but but you know whether that's a, a bounce game at Carrington a training match Monday to Friday a match at the weekend your next game is the game that you want to try and go and win and um and so 
you know, we, we go into Saturday's game absolutely wanting to win that, progress in the competition to the next round. Our focus at that point naturally turns back to the league and then when, and, and, and if we should be successful on, on Saturday and we're lucky enough to, to reach a semi-final and be one game away from Wembley, we absolutely want to go and win that. I think, you know, I, I for, for, for me, football's about um, creating, you know, memories and moments and we've had three kind of full houses this year here at Edgeley Park. You know, I think I get goosebumps if I think about taking a group of supporters to, to Wembley um, for, for, for an opportunity like that. I'd love for us to be able to go and do that. We've got to go and do the business. There's lots of bits and pieces that will happen between then and that happening. Um, but yeah, I get excited about things like that. And I think that um, all of us want promotion so much, you know, and I, I've only been on the journey with this club for a short period of time. Um, but the last 10 years has been a tough, tough time. Um, desperate for that to end and for a new chapter to start. And naturally, you start to think about, I don't want anything getting in the way of potentially that happening. We want to maximise our chances. Some people think that cup competitions can, can get in the way. I don't. I think that if you're a winning club, you're, you're doing something right. Go and win as many games as possible in the long term. That that's going to serve you well. So now we go into the um, the, cup, the the cup game at the weekend, really excited and 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 hopeful of, of a good result to open up more possibilities moving uh, forward. Yeah, I think I think as well. The other thing that's been really interesting with the FA Trophy has been the managers clearly taking it seriously. I don't want to preempt what team he may or may not pick this weekend, but. It's been an opportunity to blood people like Cody, like Josh, you know, we've seen some of the youngsters come through. Yeah. And we've seen the importance all season of, of, of Ryan Rydell, who's been, uh, for me, he's been an absolute revelation. And, yeah. and that, um, that faith, that belief, that confidence in youth, coupled with um, the platform that the people like Davo and Michael Raines and Paul Turnbull are giving them, it's been, yeah. it's been tremendous, really, hasn't yeah. it? And that, it's great to see that still happening. Yeah, again, go back into, we don't do it for ticking boxes or winning favours yeah. or anything like that. What we do is what we understand. One, what the club needs long term is to develop its own players. That's what all clubs that have success at their heart, they do that well. We need to do that. Um, the second part of that is, is it's really healthy for a senior team to have you know, both old players and young players in it because they challenge each other and they help each other in that way, get the most out of, uh, out of themselves. Um, we've, we've always had, you know, tried to bring in pl young players at the club. We've obviously got, if you talk about sort of under 22, under 23 players, we've got Ollie, we've got Ryan in our first team setup, people like Ethan Pye that we brought in last year from, from Rochdale. But then, of, of course, the most exciting and fastest developing players out of the academy, like Cody, you know, Scott Holding, Josh Edwards. Um, you know, um, and there's many more that come to, to Carrington on a regular basis to training around the first team. That's so important because you know it, it exposes them to to the standards and the way that we work at first team level. But it also gives Dave and his team a chance to, to look at these players and gain more trust to know that if he did put stick them in for a Saturday, they're not going to let the team down. I don't think that any supporter could could see that uh, any of these young players have have let the club down when they've gone in. One other aspect, I think, and you and I have spoken privately about this, and I know it surprised you, I think, the, the scale, the level, the intensity of the support here uh, and the influence they can have. And I know Dave Challoner, having played here, obviously he's, he's a little bit, bit more connected perhaps with it, and he spoke a lot about the fans, particularly in the run-up to the Chesterfield games. I think he knew they would have a big part to play in that particular fixture. Yeah. How important, you mentioned they're going to Wembley as well with and. and, and the joy of taking fans to Wembley and yeah. it's something we've enjoyed in the last, you know, 2008-9. But when you, when you look at um, the fans and the support base and the atmosphere they can generate, how important and significant do you think they're likely to be in this oh, role? It's massive. I mean, you, when, when we recruit players and we bring them in and they talk about their times playing against County, yeah. you know, they they all say walking out and the first thing they look at is a cheetle in and go, <laughs> like there's a goal <laughs> and how, wow, I didn't realise it was that big and it, all that sort of stuff. So. You know, and Dave articulates this really well. That can be a strength, or it can be a weakness. And so, you know, it, we have to make you mean sure a weakness in terms of it tests the mentality of the, their character, perhaps. Yeah. So we've interest. had we've had moments in this season, the early part of the season, where things weren't going well, and it becomes a difficult place for right. players to play at their best in in that in that, in that, in that environment. 
on the flip side, we've had games where the team are flying and they're really together with the supporters. Yeah. You think about the Bolton game here, you couldn't have got two, two groups of people more in tune with each other and, and both had an influence on each other. Now, if we're doing that, it's a massive strength of what we've got here. And there's no better place to be when this place is shaking. You know, that's, that's, that's where we all want to be. Um, and, um, you know, every, every opposition that come here are going to try to make it the other situation where the crowd are potentially frustrated and, 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 and things aren't quite clicking. Um, so, you know, and I, I think Dave articulates this really well. We've got to, you know, it's on us, it's on us, it's the players, it's, 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 it's the team to, to make sure the supporters are in the game and with the team all the way through. And that's about the way that we play, the work rate of the players and their behaviours on the pitch. Um, I certainly think we're in that moment now where this has become a real strength um, to play here. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's a real advantage for the team. Yeah. The next question I wanted to bring up is perhaps a little bit of an unfair one, really, given that we've talked about these next 13 games. But I know you're always horizon scanning. You're always looking further ahead and, and thinking about next season. How difficult is it at the moment for you to plan what the squad's going to look like? who's getting a new contract, who who you're going to sign, mm. because uh, as it stands today, we still don't know which division we're going to be, which league we're going to be in. Right, exactly, yeah. No, it's we try to simplify that process. I, the team that we have at the moment, I think, is a strong National League team. Yeah. Uh, at the very least. And so, you know, if the worst would, was to happen, if we weren't to get promoted, I certainly think there's no reason to believe this team can't go and compete again next year. Um, and uh, so in principle there's no, no need for drastic changes. Um, I think again moving into, into if we were to be promoted, which is certainly not in the conversation at the moment because it's not, it's not, real, it's not, it's not um, objectively happening if you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, um, then, but in theory this team is a team that can go and compete we believe in in the league above without drastic changes so so i certainly think we're calm in in that respect we're not um we're not engaging in too many too many conversations yeah. you know and the last thing in terms of you know we do have some players that this who are at the club at the moment who don't have certainty on their situation next year is you know we're talking to all of them at the moment regarding everybody parking that um until the summer so that all our focus is on the next 13 games, plus whatever we end up doing in the trophy and making this season as successful as it can be for everybody, because um, that's going to benefit the players individually. It's going to benefit the club. And it allows us to have a 100% clear focus on, on what we're doing right now. So, um, yeah, I, I, I suppose um, it's not that we're ignoring it at all, we're embracing it, but we're just sort of probably parking some of the actions, if you like, until, until the summer where we're much clearer, everyone's much clearer about, about where, where everything stands. Well, it is 13 games, it's, it's, it's two months, as I say, and those players you're talking about, they've got an opportunity now to write their names large in, in the Stockport County history books. And I think, I mean, in my lifetime, we've won one league title. The club's only won four in the whole history. Mm. So, so Dave Challoner is in a fairly incredible position at the moment. And I think as well, we talked about the fans earlier, like the young fans. And thanks to people like the, the community team, Dave Wardle, Steve Bellis as well, Leon and Brenda in the juniors, people like that who've encouraged juniors to come along. A lot of these fans have only ever seen us as a non-league club. But they're all looking forward to this. It's going to be an intense period, the next 13 games. Just finally, Sam, what would your, your message to the fans be on the eve of this uh, this incredible running that we're about to uh, to enter. Yeah, I think my message is to is to enjoy it, you know. And I think that um, the way that they've sort of embraced this um, this moment um, by coming to the games, by being noisy, by you know showing their support, you know, I, I, I think that adds to it. It adds to making this place a special place. I think we've got a chance to you know, at least, you know, a few times more this season, go and make this, you know, have, have some more special hour and a half uh, here, uh, whether that's night games, which are beautiful and bri brilliant here, whether that's Saturday afternoons, um, you know, come and be part of it because you really do make a difference, but embrace it and enjoy it because this is, this is what we wanted to be doing more of. Um, 
you know, this is we want to be playing in, in matches that matter. You know, we want them to be coming and watching and, and, and being involved in matches that matter. And, you know, collectively, let's see where we, where we get to with that. Um, but I think the main message for, for everyone as a club is that it's head down and off to work, really. We've got stuff to do. And we certainly won't be talking about the summer until it's the summer. You know, we've got a game to win on Saturday, next Tuesday and, 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 and the Saturday after. And, 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 and we'll be looking at it in the boring old way of one game at a time. I know you're all working hard and I appreciate your time today and we're all enjoying the journey. Well done. Cheers, John.